that's pretty chilly for December. Uh, 31 degrees. Normally we don't hit that sort of stuff. At least not that I remember. We don't normally hit that cold until like into Januarys and Februarys. We get kind of cold, then it starts to starts to get better in March. By mid March, we're out mowing lawns again. But right now we're driving a trash truck, but we gotta go get a shit can. We got seven jobs we gotta try to get in today, so it's gonna be a high a high pressure day to get done. Um, gonna hit the house to let the dogs out in the middle of it all and gotta juggle around some crap. Six cans from one location, they're 40 yard cans, and I got a 20 yard on my back because in the middle of those six cans, we gotta run over to Effingham County Water Treatment Plant and where they process the shit, like the sewer, uh, and they turn it into um, safe, non-hazardous uh, mud. Basically, I'll show you guys that. We got to snatch that up, take it to the landfill as well in the middle of it. So we're going to do three 40 yarders, then we're going to do the shit can, and then we're going to hit the house, let the dogs out, and then we're going to do three more 40 yarders and try to end the day at 10 points, which is a phenomenal day. Um, the average points in a day is about six. Some people break out, get seven or eight. Um, most people get around six, six and a half, maybe seven, but most people get six. A lot of people get five. Uh, the breakouts are up around eight and nine. I'm usually around eight to ten every day, um, usually around 40 points a week. Because you could always count on one day being shitty. Uh, you're always going to have one day that sucks, and you're going to have one day that's a breakout day. Kind of like today's a breakout day, ten points. Tuesday, we only got five points, went home at 3.30 because we ran out of work. It's Christmas time, you know. A lot of people are saving their money. They're not doing a whole lot of construction and stuff like that, so not a whole lot of dumpsters are happening. Um, on the residential side of the house, they're busy as hell. Um, they're super busy because shopping, boxes, people are getting shipments in from online shopping. They're getting big boxes. They're recycling. Bins are growing. You know, everything's getting, getting kind of busy. Thanksgiving, all the food waste, all the crap like that. The residential side of the house, they stay steady busy. Um, the front end guys, which is the ones with the forks in the front of the truck that pick dumpsters up and flip them, that's called front end. Also called commercial, because you usually find those at commercial properties like restaurants, hotels, things like that. Um, those guys stay busy as well, but roll off really turns to shit in December and January because it's so cold and the holidays, and we really are centered around a lot of construction. So there's not a lot of construction going on right now. There's not a lot of roof work going on. No hurricane damage left to repair. Most of that crap's all repaired. All the storms and stuff from winter, trees falling, taking out sheds, all that stuff is, is pretty much done. Um, so now we basically got compactors at, you know, like your Walmarts and Sam's and Home Depots. We got some, some stuff going on, and that's what I want to show you guys today is a, it's called a convenience center. It's for all the residents of Effingham County. Um, they can take their bulk trash, meaning couches, um, refrigerators, lawn mowers, um, big metal items that go into recycling. They don't pay for that. That's that they donate the metal, and the county puts it all together and sends it to the recycling place, and they sell that crap to China. Um, China melts it down and makes metal and sells it back to us as steel. What happens is these people will go there with their bulk uh, waste, like couches and stuff like that, um, whatever. They're doing They're doing their own remodeling, tear down an old wood fence, whatever. Uh, they pay like eight cents a pound, they go across the scale, and then they climb up a concrete hill. I'll show you that hill. There's six 40-yard cans that they can throw into, plus a 30-yard can for cardboard recycling and a 30-yard can uh, for dry goods, bulk goods, just like the 40 yarders. Uh, but because the ramp goes up, you got two 30s where the ramp's going up, and then up high, then you got your 40s. And they throw it over and it falls into the 40s. Um, I haul those 40s. So I'm going to haul those six 40s to the landfill. And um, I already did a 30 yesterday. Because yesterday was kind of slow, so I snuck a 30 in. And it's a good thing I did because they added to me the shit can from Effingham. So it kind of equals out. Normally on Thursdays I get 10 points. Looks like today I'm gonna get 10 points, provided I don't get a flat, I don't blow my motor, or I don't blow anything. <laughs> I don't blow. <laughs> I don't blow. Um, and um, the, uh, uh, 
<laughs> Let's just go to work. All right, the sun came up. We should be able to shoot some video now. Uh, driving up to this place up in Effingham. So let's go ahead. Let's get out of the landfill and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do some time lapse headed on up to the Effingham County Convenience Center. Okay, so right here you see the scale houses in front of us. Uh, that's Joe. He used to be our welder and uh, he retired and now he's here working kind of like part time. But uh, you see the scales right in front of us. So the truck, the people with their cars and trucks and trailers will come up there and they pay eight cents a pound. And then when they're done, people will drive up this little ramp right here and then they have those 40 yards that are wrapping around it. There's six of them. And then you got the two 30 yards right here uh, that they could throw in. The 30 yard to the right is for cardboard only and the 30 yard to the left is for everything and anything. Um, so that's how it works. So they just back up to that little yellow rail and throw their shit in and then I come and I take the cans. And then when they're done, they go back out, they weigh out and the difference in weight is what they're gonna pay at eight cents a pound. And uh, they don't take cash here, so it's credit cards or whatever, no cash. And there you go. To the right, coming into view right now as I back up, to the right is where sheet metal goes. Uh, you know, metal, whatever, not, not sheet metal, but any metal recycling goes over there. And uh, Southern Metal Recycles comes and takes it. And so everything gets used up here for Effingham County. They have a really good recycling program. So when they drop off their metal here, they don't pay. When they drop off cardboard, they don't pay. That's all free to drop off here so it can get properly recycled um, instead of thrown into the trash. So that's how it works here at the uh, convenience center. And like I said, it's open to all of the, uh, I'm bouncing around a little bit on loading the can. It's open to all the residents of Effingham County. Uh, and Effingham County is a big county. We'll go ahead and drop this 40 off. I'm gonna shoot on over, grab this 20, and we'll go to the shit, shit can. I'll show you guys the shit can. That's gonna be, uh, it's not what you think. And I'll show you. And I'll even grab it with my hands and show you. Gloved hand, not my bare hand. Um, so I started this thing um, kind of myself, and I was, I was thinking about like trying to do a hashtag uh, hashtag <laughs> about um, this thing I, I'm doing this year and it, I'm calling it um, secret grandkid so I got a 20 yarder I'm putting on so we can go get the shit can see if I can get this guy's attention real quick hey Joe I'm gonna go get the shit can for the county and then I'll be back to do some more 40s Bring your checks. If they'll give them to me, call Alex and get permission for me to carry them. Yeah, I'll be back at four, but I'm gonna go do the shit can for the county. Yeah, as long as you clear it with Alex or Jeff, they'll give it to me. So they are employees of our company, so he asked me if I can carry their checks. It's payday. So if I could carry their checks um, from the office to here, and I can do that because I'm going to go to the house to let the dogs out, and then I can swing by the office and pick up the checks. And um, 
So, okay, so like, hashtag secret grandkid. So, there's this old man that I noticed who sits at a diner um, where I sometimes will stop and get breakfast if I'm having a good week or I just feel like eating breakfast. I go to a diner and uh, there's this old man who always sits underneath a TV at the diner and he's always alone. So, I bought his meal one day and, you know, anonymously, I told the waitress, hey, just what's up with this guy? And she was like, he was like, the waitress was like, well, his wife died and they come here all the time. And so he still comes here, but now he sits alone. And I was like, that's, that's terrible. You know, he's like, he's got to be in his 80s. He's an old man. I mean, he's really an old man. And, you know, it really touched me because, you know, you go your whole life and you have a partner and, and then you're alone. And it's like, how cruel is that? And then, and not only are you alone, but you're alone in public where nobody else is alone. So you're alone, but everybody else has somebody. And doesn't that just, doesn't that just drive the stake even deeper into your own heart, you know? So, you know, if you're that guy, like, just damn, just damn all. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, but he's just so humble. He just sits there and just, he has his little toast and he has his little coffee and he sits underneath the TV. And, you know, everybody sees him alone. And so I bought his meal that day and the waitress was like, you know, that's gonna mean so much to him. So I bought his meal and I bought and I paid the tip and I kept it anonymous. About two weeks later, two or three weeks later, now going back to last week, I went there and there's that gentleman, he's there by himself having his toast and coffee, sitting in the same table and chair that he sat in with his wife. And so he left and uh, he didn't pay. And so I asked the waitress, I was like, hey, did, did somebody pick up his bill? I mean, do you guys, you know, what's up? And she was like, no, he'll be back for lunch and then that's when he'll pay for both. He'll eat breakfast and lunch here most days. And I was like, really? And, she, and I was like, well, how about this? So I put $40 down and I said, put this in a can and draw for that for the rest of the month, get him to Christmas, tell him his meals have been paid for, and if that's not enough, I'll be back, and I'll give you some more money, but I need you to take your tip out of it as well, and charge him accordingly for his breakfast and his lunch, and I'll be back to top it off, but don't you dare charge him a penny all the way through Christmas. And so, I don't know, when I left there, it felt good because he's like, you know, I didn't have a relationship with my grandfather. We moved from, from the Northeast to, to South Florida before I turned eight years old. And I didn't go back up to, to um, where my grandfather lived, except in the summers. And even then, my uncle, you know, we would, I would go to my, my uncle would take me to his old condo. He lived in an old, like, apartment, old people's apartment. Um, you know, we would go and visit for four or five hours for the two weeks or whatever that I'd be up up and uh, visiting my grandma. I would live at my grandma's and, you know, I would stay a few days at, at the Winchell's and I'd stay, you know, maybe a few days or over the weekend at my uncle's camper and then I'd stay, you know, a few days or a week or a weekend, whatever, at my other uncle's house and then, you know, and and my older uncle would take me to my grandfather's and we would spend maybe two or three hours there and my grandfather would be watching uh, WWF, the World Wrestling Federation. He'd be watching that, you know, that was back when like the Hulk and all that were, were in their prime. So, you know, I, that was the relationship I had with my grandfather. I never did grandfather, grandson things. Um, that kind of you know, that kind of sucks. So, I don't know, maybe this is a way for me, and I didn't think about it at the time, but maybe this is a way for me to feel close to a grandfather. Maybe, you know, but without making that, you know, without putting that guy on the spot. Uh, so, that's why I'm keeping it anonymous. Alright, so if you live in Effingham County, and you flush the toilet, this is where your water goes. It's, it's kind of gross in theory. But inside these big old tubs, these big old tanks, is all the shit water. All your black water, it's called.
and they process it here. And I'm not gonna, I can't show you all that. I'm not gonna show you that. But I just want you to see, this is the processing facility for all your shit, all your poopy poop, okay? It gets chemically treated, neutralized, and all that. And I'll show you the end result of a safe product that we can we can transport and dump in the land. All right, so here's the shit can. <laughs> and this is processed shit, processed wastewater. So it comes out here, falls in, and they move the can around with that back and forth to fill it up. But you see, and it doesn't smell, you know. And it's it's gross in theory, but it's it's not like what you think. It's it's not like a, a an RV and you know a camper or whatever, and you just open the shit valve and drain it into a can. It's treated. It's treated and it stays. You know, they got a liner here, so it all comes out nice and easy. Make sure you always rip that off or your liner will be stuck. You get to the landfill and you try to dump and the shit won't come out. The liner will be stuck. See? The whole big giant can of shit. Oh, oh that's fine. And it's pretty heavy. I'll say that too. It's uh, it's not a, it's not a light load. That's why we put it in 20 yards, because it's uh, it's got a, a good amount of weight to it. But I have to, uh, maybe you can see in the mirror. I have to drag it out, so when I bring it up, it doesn't hit the machine. That should be pretty good. Do I like my job? I like this job because every day it's something different, even though every day it's the same thing. You know, I'm always hauling the same cans or the same, you know, the same job is to haul cans and, it's, and you know, you go to the landfill. And so, you know, every day you're doing the same thing, but you're not going to the same places. You're not dealing with the same stuff. You meet new people all the time. I'm not sitting at an office. I'm not, you know, I'm definitely not bored. Uh, so now that the can is free of the machine, I will let off my brake and I'm going to let the can back my truck up so it doesn't fall off the, uh, so it doesn't fall off the slab. It's like we're going to be heavy. We might do a wheelie today. Let me show you guys. Almost a wheelie. We got the right front wheel up just a little bit, but not quite. There's ways around um, not letting the can pull the truck up off the ground, but if you got it overhead, then you can't bring your boom up. And so sometimes you just gotta ride it out. And sometimes it's fun to show off to <laughs> people standing around. They don't. They don't often get to see a 50,000 pound truck do wheelies. I think it's 56, right? Our max weight. They don't get to see that very often. All right, let me put the tarp on, safety chains, and uh, what I'm gonna do, this can's worth one point. Those other 40 yarders that I'm doing are worth a point and a half. We get paid on a point scale. The more points in a day, the higher our day's pay is. Uh, so the more points in a week, the higher our week's pay is. I did a whole uh, video explaining all that. I'll try to find it. I'll try to link to it, uh, explaining our point scale. But what I want to do is, see, the customer requested this done ASAP. So I changed up my plan. Earlier today, I said I would do three 40-yard cans and then do this and then go to my house, let my dogs out. Um, but then I realized that the customer called and they needed it done early in the morning because it was a red it was a red note for me and red is color must be done in like the next day it's like can't be delayed and so since this is 
an important client to us, and it's an important, you know, they gotta have a place to send the shit, you know, once the treatment is done, otherwise they're gonna get backed up. And, well, we don't wanna get backed up, <laughs> no pun intended. So, uh, I jumped over here, I did one 40 yarder, which is a point and a half, and I waited for this place to open. I figured that gates wouldn't open until 7.30 or 8. Um, so we did the 140 yarder, so we got that done. So now to make the customer happy, we did the swap out, so now they can work. They have an empty, yard, uh, empty 20 yarder there. They can do what they need to do and continue with their day. It's up to me to get this in the landfill whenever I want now. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go back to the convenience center and I'm gonna start running 40s again. And then I'll just leave this on the ground there and nobody's gonna put anything in it. The guys, Joe and all them, they won't, you know, nobody's gonna add to the weight. And I don't think they pay by the weight anyways. I think this place just pays by the loop, um, by the run, you know. So uh, the runs, shit can, <laughs> backed up. Well, I tell you what, huh? So anyways, I'll just drop this on the ground and we'll start running 40s to try to get some points under us, try to get, you know, try to get our day going. And then the very last thing I can do, once I get my sixth 40 done and I run it back up, let's say it's four o'clock in the afternoon, then I can put this 20 yarder on me, run down to the landfill, which is close to work, and get this into the landfill before five and then just shoot over to the yard planning it out, maximize my day. I want to get all the points I can as fast as I can because I'm Dan the man. And then I'm going to put this can on my back, which is wickety wickety whack. And I'm going to get that last point for this by five o'clock. If not, no problem. It can sit on my truck overnight. No fright. I'll get the point in the morning and that'll just start me off tomorrow with uh, with a point when the landfill opens at 6 a.m. Um, so I'm either gonna get nine points today or 10 points today, but the customer's happy. And that's sometimes that's more important than, you know, Darren, you know, like this screws me up, if that makes any sense. Having to stop running them 40s, I could have been at the landfill right now with my second 40 and already be working on three points for the day. And it's not even nine o'clock. Um, so this screws me up. So I got a point and a half at nine o'clock. But you can't always just be thinking about yourself and your points. You gotta think about your boss, the company, and the, and the, the uh, client. And so the client's happy. That guarantees me more work for next time because if we lose clients, we lose work. So the client's happy, I'll be happy. It's up to me now to figure out how to maximize my day. And that's what I'm gonna do uh, by leaving the can on the ground here, run 40s, and then uh, so that's what we'll do. So I'll be back at lunch, we'll, we'll figure it out. I forgot to include the part about the old man um, that I'm paying for his meal, his breakfast and lunch I'm paying for. So I told the waitress, he's not to pay for anything, including a tip for the rest of the month, um, or at least up to Christmas. And then that I would be back to check on. And I was like, here's 40 bucks. Is that, you know, how close is that gonna get? And she's like, that's plenty. He doesn't eat much. So I don't think that's enough. And I don't want her to lose money. So what I'll probably do uh, tomorrow maybe, I'm not gonna have time today. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll swing by there or maybe Saturday I'll go have breakfast and uh, leave for another 40 and then that'll be that'll be it little landfill operations for you Lots of birdies They eat well here Definitely will not find a skinny seagull We also have bald eagles that hang out here if I see one, I'll try to get it on video for you. Beautiful birds.
right there is going to be a new cell where we're going to start dumping. They put multiple layers of liners down so nothing bleeds into our water table. And we're going to start dumping there probably beginning of the year. I love this song. just called me. <laughs> He's like, oh, I understand you're supposed to be swinging on by here and picking the check up, checks up for the boys. Uh, yep. I, uh, I said, I just left the landfill, just let my dogs out, and I'm on my way. I'll be there in five minutes. He's like, they're ready. Said, Man, I love it when a plan comes together. Usually I would let my dogs out after the fourth can. This time I let my dogs out after the fifth can, and we already and we moved the shit can around. So, uh, but they were all right. No accidents in the house. They were happy to see me, of course. Uh, so now I got three happy dogs, and uh, we're at seven and a half points right now. So we got we get, we made our money for the day. We're gonna get the checks. We'll go get point number nine. Remember, point and a half a can. We'll go get point nine. Get it on our back. Depending on what time we leave the landfill is going to depend on am I going to go to the yard and call it quits or am I going to bring that 40 back up to the recycling center there and bring the shit can down for tomorrow morning. Either way, at that point, it's, it's six to one, half a dozen to the other. It doesn't really matter. As long as I get that ninth point in the, in the landfill, I don't care from that point on what happens. That would be a successful day. All right, guys, we did it. We're done. Um, and I'm going to call it quits here. It's 420. Close. Close. I could go back up to get the shit can, but that wouldn't get me back to the yard till damn near 530, almost 6 o'clock, and I don't want to be out that late. It'll be dark. It'll be late. I don't, I don't, I'm not into that. By the time I take a shower, relax, it'll be time to go to sleep. You know what I mean? That ain't no life. So I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to leave this 40 on my back meaning on my truck, on the back of my truck, we say on my back. I'm gonna leave this empty 40 on my back. First thing in the morning, I'll shoot up there. I got the key, put this 40 in place. They close in 30 minutes or 20 minutes anyways, 10 minutes, 4.30 I think, or five, I don't know. They don't need this can. And so in the morning, I'll swap it out, bring the shit can down, and I'll start my day by 6.30, quarter, seven in the morning, I'll have one point accomplished already. Uh, and go on about my day, so whatever they were gonna give me. So that's it. That's a that's a roll off day for me, for Dan. That's a Dan roll off day. Rolling with Dan. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Tell me about the